Paper was like gold in medieval times. I want tobacco. Sugar. That everything we thought we knew about the world might turn out to be completely wrong. I'm Sarah Richardson. Along with my husband Alex and our daughters Robin and Fiona, we're taking on a whole new off-the-grid project. We bought a Victorian country classic. And my plan is to turn it into a sweet vacation retreat. A little tweak here, a touch up there. Oh, good one! And a dash of flip. And we've got a getaway haven. Our family is big on small town living, and when our friends and family come to visit, it's nice to offer them a home away from home during their stay. So upgrading this historic house to a modern vacation rental home is the best of both worlds. I get to honor the heritage of the region, and visitors have a year-round country hangout. Alex and I love working together on a good project, and we always have each other's backs. And then there's my other partner. We're kind of part co-worker. Seems like we're in this together. Part spouse. My two husbands. Part sibling. Uncle Tommy's not here. I just need your opinion. And part hive mind. Yes, I love it when we agree. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I gave myself six months to get this rental ready for the market. I designed a super simple addition that's gonna give us an extra 1,500 square feet of living space. On the second floor of the addition, I thought I found a cheap and cheerful way of getting a floor-to-ceiling view in the principal bedroom. But as soon as my window was installed, one thing became perfectly clear. I can't see anything. I don't know that it matters how much it's gonna cost because right now, it's terrible. That was an expensive oops. Once I fixed it, the principal suite turned out to be as relaxing and luxurious as I hoped. To make every square inch count as a rental property, I even squeezed in a bunk room. Now this house will sleep eight. The main floor of the addition is where I'm putting a mud room, a powder room, and a living room. Oh, whoa, this is so big. Right? Wait, this is way bigger than I expected it to be. Look at this view. This opening is huge. Right? It's About crazy. 14 feet. These windows are so big. You get so much natural light in here. It's amazing. But the ceiling's nice and high. You can see where they're going to end up. Now for the fun part, what it's all going to look like. The mudroom is going to have lots of storage space for coats and boots in the winter. A main floor bathroom is a welcome feature for any guest. So we've put a powder room right off the entrance. The living room is going to be lounge central. Because the neighbors on the north side are close, a full wall on that side of the house will give us all privacy. For me, Nothing says chill hangout like a fireplace, so I need to find an option that doesn't break the bank. A set of glass doors here will give a great view of the beautiful barn, and in the summer, they'll lead you out to the deck and backyard. I mean, this is how it's gonna feel. Uh, this is not how it's gonna feel. It's gonna feel a whole lot warmer because well. right now I have a cold tushy. If we're gonna keep everyone's tushies warm and get off the grid, my minister of exteriors better get his into gear. So the cool thing about doubling the space here by adding this addition is we didn't double the energy that we needed to run it. In fact, we've actually reduced the amount of power that we need. Beautiful new airtight, super energy efficient vinyl windows and they last forever. They're super durable, which is great. Couldn't be better. The windows aren't just energy efficient. They also meet my standards for style and they're affordable. With all those savings, I splashed out in the living room and ordered these extra large doors. At $24,000, they are the single biggest splurge in the house. But this floor of the addition is a simple box. There aren't any architectural flourishes here. So I'm throwing most of my design budget into this one feature because I know having a wall of windows and the view of the barn will be worth it. The final piece de resistance of our off-the-grid plan? A fireplace. So the fireplace that I've chosen, it's gas, because I think that as much as I love a wood-burning fireplace. I think for rental, people like to take their remote and yeah. turn and it Yeah, and not everybody can burn a wood fire properly. <laughs> not everybody can light it, you mean? Yeah. 
I don't want this whole thing built out. I think it'll look nicer if we have, you know, like a stone-clad box for the fireplace unit. I like that. This gas insert is great because it vents directly to the outside, which means no chimney and an inexpensive install. It has a slim contemporary profile that I can trim right up to for a crisp and modern look at an affordable price. For an added bonus, it runs off natural gas or propane, which means instant heat, ambiance, and a touch of romance for our renters. Now, time to get shopping. We're designing the living room around the view of the Century Barn. When I think of modern country, these are the colors that inspire me. This is my first outing to start looking for fabrics, and I need lots of different ones for the house. But I want things that are really easy living, practical. I want them washable, a little bit contemporary, a little bit fun. Price point is definitely a consideration, which is part of the reason why I'm shopping here, because they have really fun, fashion-forward fabrics that are offered at a great price point. This store is in my regular rotation. I can always find fabrics here with fresh style at a price that works. Nothing beats looking at samples in person, but their website does make it simple to shop from anywhere. Here, I can create the look I love, layering patterns and textures without completely blowing my budget for the living room. This is $13.95 a yard. What a great price. That's the amount I want to spend. Okay. I'd say that's a successful source for today. What is happening in here? How do you feel about this kind of cooler, barn-inspired palette? I'm crazy about that. I look at that as a fabric scheme, and I can see that we have something linear, something that's a small print that's more all over, something that's a bold gesture, something that's a solid but a nice texture, two options, light and dark. Like, this is a perfect fabric scheme. Yes, I love it when we agree. <laughs> On this job, I'm a maven of multitasking. Design the addition, check. Help manage the trades, track the schedule and the budget, check, check, and check. But I also run a design firm with a team that's working on projects across North America. There are plenty of days on site that I definitely don't need to be there. Like today, for the drywall delivery. Drive up, load it off, load it in, done. This should be a snap. But if there's a way to make things complicated, we'll find it. Well, we closed the boom up and it leaned against the tree here, and we got all the drywall in, but now the tree's in the way. Because whenever we drive out, if it does catch and swing back, it may hit the window. If they don't mind cutting the tree, we'll cut the tree to be safe. Feels like the guarantee on this project is that I'm never where I need to be. And here I am, trying to get stuff done at the office in the city. And meanwhile, there's a thousand things that I should be dealing with on site in Cremor. These guys had one job. Now we're all up a tree and the entire site comes to a stop while I get the call and say yes to get out of this mess. Any delay on a project is a waste of time and money. We've got to nip it in the bud. One thing is for certain, and that is that I just feel no matter where I am, no matter where I assign myself to be that day, it's the wrong place to be. A few months ago, Alex and I purchased a modest heritage home and we're transforming it into a luxury vacation rental. Holy Jesus. Our drywallers are delayed. They were supposed to start Tuesday, which bumped to Wednesday. So I just texted Ed and I said, hey, how's it going with drywall? Because today be Thursday. Right, well. And I... he said, they're now coming to start Saturday. I've let them know they need to get moving. He got behind. We've just lost four days in our schedule. Can I also add one other little detail? I think you got told Tuesday for drywaller so that all of your stuff would be ready, but actually I always heard it was Thursday. What do you mean it was supposed to be Thursday? I always heard it was Thursday. That's what the crew were telling me. Or are you not, no, 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 you're not typing that in. I am typing that in. I know, maybe to say I thought I had heard, maybe don't commit that, it's not good. Okay, I'll do that with him in person. <laughs> okay. I don't need people playing games with me on whether I'll be ready. I don't need fake deadlines. The next stop for Tommy and me, vintage shopping. What are we gonna find? Everything. If you're up for a little restoration, this is a perfect way to inject some old school charm into a modern space. You can't be doing that. No golfing? Do people just randomly golf? Hold your hat. <laughs> oh. Look at that, $10. That's $10. It's $10. I think that I, would be $10 well spent. That's good. Isn't that cute? Yeah, I love that. 
Shall actually, we? I like that look. What do you mean, actually like that look? Of course you like that look. I love these chairs. These are amazing. You know what these do? They swivel. And they rock. And they rock. You can often get better quality at a better price point with a more unique look when you buy vintage furniture. Can we afford them? How much are they? Oh, they're $4.75 the pair. For two? Yeah, they're less than $250 each. All they need is a cushion, a bit of paint. No, 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 I'm totally sold. We have to get these. Back in Creamore, the drywall is up. Now I want to share my DIY idea that's going to save us big bucks on custom banquettes around the fireplace. And you had said before that you wanted to maybe do bench seating from either side, extending to the walls. Yeah. So what I found is if we use a kitchen cabinet that would go above your refrigerator, okay. we can find a mattress designed for a toddler bed. We can use that as the cushion. You're a strange chick, Richardson. <laughs> That's like a, let me think. I'm gonna go out on a limb here and say, nobody's ever put a toddler mattress on a refrigerator cabinet up until now. That's why I'm gonna do it. It's a new idea. It's gonna be amazing. And then let's talk about here. To accommodate the powder room and give us the best usable floor area, the stairs to the basement needed to move into the center of the floor. To make sure no one falls down the stairs, I had a low wall built around them. Now, I've got a design challenge. If we're gonna have this built element here, this box, yeah. I want it to feel more like a building. Yeah. You know, and something that capitalizes on this kind of like width of this element, like the fact that it's long and low. What we do is we clad the exterior in MDF. Okay. And then we could do an applied panel detail. So we can make an interesting pattern. That you would then paint out. That we paint out. You've got your, your zone where you can come in, drop your bag, hang your coat. And then we've got two gray closets here. We'll have a nice stone floor. Yeah. And we kind of want to create that feeling of separation mm -hmm. between the two areas. A mudroom is a high traffic area, so I want it to be pretty and practical. Using stone instead of hardwood here will create a visual separation from the rest of the room. And I found an option that fits perfectly in this space. Only one thing stands in my way. A strong opinion. I really feel like in the winter, people are going to plow right through here and hang their coat up and not take off their shoes first like good little boys and girls. They're going to go right to the closet. And that stretch of wood flooring that you have designated for that hallway is going to get completely ruined. This is already 80 square feet of stone. What's more expensive, buying the stone, the extra stone now? Replacing the whole floor. Or replacing that strip of floor in two years? Well, you've thrown down what you think here. Oh, I know what's this right. This is what happens. You decide what's right, and then you make me feel guilty for if I don't totally 100% agree with you. I feel like we're at what's called an impasse. <laughs> That's a building term. I feel like we're at an I'll pass on making that decision right now. And then there are times when the best decisions are ones that take no time to make. I get asked to work on all sorts of different projects. And one day I got an email and the request was to do a bedroom makeover for a teenage girl who has a life-threatening illness. And the reason that she wanted me to do her bedroom is that she's been a really big fan and she's been watching my shows for a really long time. So that's kind of awesome. And I want to make sure she loves her bedroom. Hello. I'm Sarah. Nice to meet you. <laughs> nice to meet you. Hi, Tara. And I'm Tommy. Hi. Hi. Scott, Hi. Nice to meet you. Too. Nice to meet okay. you. Okay. Do you want to give us a tour? Yeah. Okay. okay. You lead the way. We'll see you guys in a couple minutes. Yes. Sounds good. Now, a lot of people would say that this room's already pretty nice, but obviously, you want some changes. Mm-hmm. What yeah. kind of changes? Um, no more pink. Oh, it's pink, all right. Okay. When, can, how long ago I, did you do this? A couple years ago. Okay, a couple yeah. years ago, and was pink your favorite color back yeah. then? Okay, but I want to guess, if not pink, what color it's going to be. So let me try. Let me try to guess. Purple? No. Too close to the pink. I know what Sarah would want it to be. I have a lot of favorite colors. Your favorite Same. color is blue. Do you like blue? Yeah. I'm sensing here that we have a compatible match have a compa in terms we, of designer and client, right? Sort client, of like designer. an ocean palette. Do you like yeah. an ocean palette? Okay, good. 
So you know what? This closet could be better organized. So you have a twin bed. Do you want a bigger bed? I want a double bed. OK, yeah. who could blame you? Yeah. Do you want a desk? Yeah, I want to keep the desk. OK. Hold on. I... Desk or vanity? Because when I first met you, I'm like, she has amazing hair. So do you need yeah. more of a vanity slash desk rather than just a yeah, desk? Uh, I think she needs a desk slash vanity because she's focusing on her studies. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but like, you know, start slow with amazing hair. <laughs> okay. And you'll notice that you're feeling really good. And when you're feeling really good, you know, you're more in the mood to study, which will get you better grades. It actually starts with amazing hair. Now it's time for a proper design meeting. Now we're gonna get down to business. This is the meeting. What do you what have there? That? What is this? It's a book for that I, like ideas say like. I am so impressed. Allie's lookbook has all her design inspiration ideas in it, so we can get right down to discussing details. Yeah, love the moody grays with the turquoise this and brighter blues. This is so blues. interesting, these coral tones with yeah. the aqua. Yeah, this is a very sophisticated combination of colors. There's a little bit of pink in there. Yeah. yeah. Do you still like pink or is pink on the band list? I like pink a little bit, but not too much of it. Not as much as is in there, which is a little intense. Yeah, okay. it's a bit intense right no, now. No, that's good. OK. Talk to me about this idea, the loft bunk. I like it, but my dog sleeps with me every night, so he can't get up there. We could get a trampoline that the dog would have to bounce <laughs> off of. Yeah. That would be so cool. I have to say, I think this is a fantastic presentation. Have you spent a lot of time putting this together? Yeah. You've done a great job. Mm -hmm. Wow. All right. Shall we get to work? Yeah. I'm excited about this. Back in Cremor, all the trades are hard at work getting my luxury rental property finished. In my design plan for the living room, I've included benches with storage on either side of the fireplace. Built-ins would cost me over $3,000, so with the help of my daughter Fiona, I'm thinking inside the box. Some assembly required. Do you know what we're building here? Cabinet? Exactly. This prefab upper cabinet is designed to go above a refrigerator, but with a little imagination, we're creating custom benches with storage for a fraction of the price. Add in a little love, sweat, and tools, and you've got yourself a real steal of a deal. Why does it say we need a clamp? Need a pencil? Gee whiz, whatever. Where's the hardware pack? Yeah, just use me as a headrest, it's all good. You know what we're gonna need? Ice cream. Uh, I was gonna say quality control. Uh. Yeah. These roomy kitchen cabinets are going to do a bang up job in the living room. And now for my next magic trick. It's Fiona! What do you wanna do now? Get ice cream. What flavor are you going to get? Maybe chocolate. Oh, maybe. Mmm, that's good. That there is the sound of money well saved. But just like that, my DIY savings could all be going up in smoke. My marble installer has found an issue. How are we feeling about this today, Mark? Well, um, I guess originally when he measured, the floor wasn't in, right? So we have to recut them all. When Ed and I measured for the fireplace marble, the flooring hadn't been installed. Now the mitered joint doesn't line up. To recut the marble, the slabs would have to be sent off site. That's going to cost time and money. Two things I hate wasting. But I think it's the only option. I don't think they can cut the floorboards neat enough no, they won't to allow you to enough. slide in, right. right? Should I just double check with Chris? Um, yeah, but... Let me ask Chris. If Chris can cut the floorboards to fit, it will be faster and more efficient. Fingers crossed he can do it. OK, so what do you think? So what is it, one piece that goes right across the bottom? Yeah. Uh, and the two sides. Yeah. Uh, I can cut up the floor. No pressure, Chris, but you have one shot at getting this right, or the marble and the floor will both need replacing. My team are the best problem solvers in the business. Thanks to Chris's steady hand, the fireplace looks perfect. I love it. It's going to be gorgeous. Wrap it up. OK? Yep, yeah, I got to go pay some bills. Besides things to do, I've got people to see. Actually, just one very important person. A national charity has paired me with a young fan to make her wish of a new bedroom come true. Allie gave me her lookbook to work from, 
and I pulled fabric and furniture samples I think she'll like. This is where professionals can save you time. We have sources, so we do all the legwork. I've done a little bit of research here okay. in terms of what Allie had said she liked. Yep, I love the bed options. Okay. They're fantastic. But we don't need a ton of fabric. Just before we overwhelm her by sending all of this, mm -hmm. should we pick some faves? Just for color reference, we might not use this exact pink pattern, but there is, I do like this notion of the corals with the blues. Okay, Cor coral and aqua. Her, I think her color sense is pretty sophisticated. This is fun buttons. I feel like this is sort of the... Feels very cool. Okay, so that's easy. So let's just sort it, let's just do a quick sort and we'll just send her the ones we think she might want to look at. Okay. Giving her enough opportunity to select on her own. Now it's time to plan the main floor powder room in my rental property. We can sleep up to eight people in this house, so we need all the extra bathrooms we can get. Renovation jobs like this generate a lot of scrap materials. Part of my off-the-grid plan is to reuse as much scrap as I can, so less goes into landfill and it keeps our costs down. I gave myself a challenge. Design this vanity using only what we already have on site. What I'm looking for here is the cheapest, simplest vanity known to mankind. That's going to look incredibly chic at the end. Well, let's just do that then. Let's just do that. Let's just do that, shall we? What do we have that's left over? Do we have a piece of siding that's left over? I feel like there's a piece of siding I saw out on the steps. Anything that works, I'll do a piece of remnant marble just as the backsplash. Okay. And then what I was thinking is just a strip. Like maybe it's a strip of leftover barn board that we just do as the little Across facer. The front. Yeah. Oh, so no marble in the front? No. Just keep it simple. Okay. Then we can install a towel bar that runs side to side. Like, simple. With our bathroom planned, Chris and I turn our attention to the low wall surrounding the basement stairs. I'm going to take merely functional and turn it up to entirely fabulous. It's the perfect blank canvas to test out a new idea to use up scrap lumber. I put pencil to two by four and drew up a sketch. The problem with my sketch is we have pieces meeting at a right angle, mm -hmm. which will cause a problem because if they don't align perfectly and miter, then that's going to look weird. However, what if we did this wall like this, right? Mm -hmm. Hold that for a sec. And then this wall goes this way. Yeah. And this wall goes this way. And then nothing looks like it should miter perfectly. That'll be an easier install. Right? Yeah, yeah. This is just like a wing it DIY. Mm -hmm. Or a YDI, as Tommy calls it. I'm going to dream it myself, and then you do it. YDI. Like that? Awesome. Like that. I like it. Our guests will want to veg out at the end of a long day spent exploring the area, but I don't love the look of a TV dominating the living room. So I came up with an elegant solution to run past Tommy. I found an online art site that inspired me to think of a way to feature these great photos while concealing the television. In the living room, we have a television going on the wall. But what I was thinking is, maybe we could make it so we don't have to look at the television all of the time. Mm -hmm. So we could actually frame eight images together, and then we can put a piano hinge in between them. Okay. So that they become like a pair of shutters that bifold and open, but then you can discreetly close them. That would be amazing if it works. Like, it yeah. sounds like a complicated situation. Not complicated. If it's executed really, really well, it'll be a triumph. I invested in a small town Victorian that I'm transforming into a luxury rental property. We designed an addition to give this classic heritage home a contemporary feel while providing lots of space for our prospective guests. With everyone working on site, I check in with Allie, my teen client, whose dream bedroom we're turning into a reality. Hi, how are you? Good. Did you get the package, most importantly? Yeah, I got all the wallpapers and fabrics. Okay, and did you like any of them? I like the chevron. Oh, yes, that's a good choice. So I like the flamingos. Aren't they fun? I saw that you have been busy looking at stuff on our idea board. Yeah. 
So I, I think you and I have the same favorite bed, the painted wood one. Mm -hmm. What about a bedside table? There's one that was called Antonina. Yeah, I like that. It's just a little bit of gold in it. I thought you'd like a little bit of gold, and I think that would look really great with the desk that you found, well chosen. That seems like a really nice combination. I like the poof you found. And I see yeah. you found some artwork and some great wall hooks and a comfy throw. You've been busy. Yeah. Well, it all looks. Okay, well, I'm envious of you because when I was a kid, if I didn't have anything left to do at school, you know what I had to do? I had to sit there. I couldn't online shop and I couldn't design a bedroom. So this is great. I think I've got what I need and uh, I think it's time to get ordering. Meanwhile, back at the Reno, the tile impasse is a thing of the past. I really feel like in the winter, people are gonna plow right through here and hang their coat up. I feel like we're at what's called an impasse. <laughs> Ultimately, I decided to stick with my vision and only tile the mudroom area. Now, before the pattern is set in stone, I want to make sure it's lined up just right. What is my goal all the time? Full tile at the front door is Full your goal. Full tile at the front door, but also the easiest install for the best result. We could stagger it or okay. we stack it. What do you think is going to be better? I feel like this might be nicer. The uh, brick pattern? Yeah. I like the contemporary look, the stacking. But here's um, the problem. If we stack it yes. like this, follow the line, and when you come in the front door, yes, you're going to be on a grout line right here. Whereas if we stagger it, the staggered one is almost centered on the front door so that when you open it... Yes, you're standing on a full tile. This is the kind of detail that is worth taking the time to get perfect. It costs nothing to do it, and the result is a visual symphony that will greet my guests every time they open the door. What color grout are we using? Dark-ish, not black, gray. Gray, to match gray. the tile? Yeah. So we're gonna try and hide the joints? Yeah. Okay, so I would say this is good. You would do this thing? Offset, yeah. And then do we offset these pieces? Do we center these we'll center, pieces? We'll center them. Great. I think that's our goal. Okay. I think it'll be sharp. Sharp. Sharp like is what contrast. we like. And all it takes to get sharp is focusing on the details. Details are what it's all about at this stage. And there's one I hadn't considered with the frame I designed to conceal the television. Now what's the problem? So remember the great idea, remember the black and white photographs? Yes. In a grid, all together, right. so they, they hide Molding the TV. and they open. Yeah, so like I was accordion. having, yeah. So I was explaining this amazing idea okay. to my husband, okay. who's in charge of buying all the stereo equipment, and mm -hmm. he said, so they open up and they fold back. And I said, hmm, isn't that cool? And he's like, right in front of the speakers? Doors open, can't hear. Doors closed, can hear, can't see. That's a really <laughs> huge problem. <laughs> Wow. Yeah. So, you know, sometimes husbands and wives should talk more. Well, that presents a bit of an interesting discussion because it's sort of like who wins, the design or the tech. So I've been married for 13 years and in this relationship for almost 19. Yeah. I've been there the whole time, I know. It's good not to just assume that design always wins. OK, what's the fix for this? Like, can't we just lower the speakers? That's a good option I never thought of. I can definitely ask Alex. Because How's your deck building going? Deck building is going brilliantly. Brilliantly? OK. Yeah. So I'm not feeling quite so brilliant since you and I had the conversation about my gorgeous artwork opening and folding back right on top of the speakers. Yes. Well, okay. it depends. If you like their sound, you're like, boom, 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 then you're fine. No. Yeah. OK. We don't want that. So my question is, mm -hmm. Tommy's workaround is, we were wondering, could the speakers go here? Sure they can. Oh. What? You're so smart. Oh my god, can I go home? Now I had one good idea today. Every day is packed full. Today, everyone on site has a project to work on without me, so I can sneak in a day off. Don't worry, I'm still going to get creative. The kids don't have school today, and I thought it would be really fun for us all to do a craft project together. How about we do some tie dye? Yes. Yes? Sure? Yes. Sure? Yes. yes. As the kids get older, it's fun to do more adventurous projects. Oh, yeah. You know what? This is definitely more fun than being at work. Just do me a favor. Don't tell anybody at work that this is what I'm doing. 
It's looking like it's gonna get messy. Whoa, Robin, way too much. Paper towel. Did you dump Paper it Paper towel. Oh, geez, Robin. I made a mess. Okay, just a reminder that this is quite a white kitchen and this is dye, Mommy, permanent dye. Whose bright idea was this anyway? Yep. Sorry for ruining your kitchen. These are the special moments that I love because we don't get to do it enough. I think our wardrobes are about to get a lot more colorful. So a day like this is super special and I'm gonna savor every minute. Oh, whatever. <gasps> wow! wow. Smile. Do you love it? It's so cool. It looks That's awesome! Awesome! Whoa! Wow! That looks like one daddy would definitely wear. That's polka dot painterly. That's incredible. Oh my, it's so pretty. Whoa! Mommy, it's like a California it. sunset. Love them. Is this a good way to spend a day? Yeah. I'll skip going to the office any day to do this with you. Wow. Should we do another one? Yeah. yeah. This is the kind of fun that's to tie-dye for. The living room in my small town rental home is coming together. We picked cool gray tones for the living room to highlight the barn colors of the window. But we're surrounded by trees on this property, and I want to celebrate the greenery. I thought of a natural place for this bold color, and our resident paint expert, Steve, is here to help. It's a powder room. Be daring. You're only gonna see it when you're inside. Right. Tommy always says you're in the powder room for a good time, not a long time. Therapeutic green or pasture green? Well, if you're gonna do it, go for it. Right? Yeah. Let's go for it. I feel like this is a true Irish green. Tommy is literally in Ireland Right now, I feel like if I were to send him this color, he would love it. Looking so at those leaves out there, therapeutic are, green. It's, it's therapeutic. therapeutic. And the powder room. Steve and I are standing in the powder room talking about this things is, that are therapeutic. This is you the only why. time we'll be in here together. <laughs> yeah, or we'll both need therapy. <laughs> we head to Allie's house to wrap up her wish for a new bedroom makeover. With floors and trim replaced, painting done, and wallpaper hung, we're here to bring in the furniture and finishing touches. We have a lot of work to do in Allie's bedroom. We have about three and a half hours until she comes home from school. And the expectation is that this room is going to be completely done and ready to be revealed to her. Okay, I've got the headboard. Patented move, the downward designer. Look how plush it is. I know what you're thinking. I should have waited until we were ready, but I was eager. I love it when the plan comes together. Gorgeous. When Allie arrives home, I can't wait to surprise her with her vision come to life. Hi. Hi. How are you? Good. How was your day at school? Good. So I came out to check on things, and I just wondered, do you want to go in with me and see how it's coming together? Yeah. OK. Come on. Oh. This room has all the features a teen needs, with space to work, hang out, and sleep. You've been so patient, and we wanted to come here and get this done for you. Allie chose new wallpaper, and we brought in the colors Allie's always liked in a more sophisticated way. One of the simplest ways to give a room design interest and charm is to bring in family heirlooms. But here's the secret. They don't have to be from your family. This is a vintage light fixture from Italy. A few months ago, I got a really nice email mm -hmm. from a woman. She was moving, and she said, I would like it if I could give it to you, and you could give it a good home. So this is a gift from her through me to you. And as we were putting this together, all I could think was what a great designer you are because we really followed what you asked for yeah. and what you wanted. We think, but mm -hmm. did we get it right? Yes. It's gorgeous, isn't it? Oh. I bet you can't wait to sleep on that bed. <laughs> Taking on jobs like Allie's are why I love what I do. 
While I was away, things in the living room have been making huge strides. Our stair surround has been painted and the pattern crisp YDI'd looks great. The cabinets Fiona and I put together have been clad in lumber and painted. Instead of pricey custom cushions, I used toddler size mattresses and gave them washable slip covers. Now we've got sturdy benches with lots of storage on either side of the fireplace. We're so close to the finish line, I can't imagine what could go wrong. How's it going? We're fine. So we're not. Yeah. Maybe I spoke too soon. My idea was to use these framed prints as hinged shutters around the television. Alex moved the speakers so they wouldn't be blocked, but now we have a fresh new problem. Um, these look amazing on this side. So good, right? So good. Don't you love? Yeah. And then on this side, we just have a little bit of a problem. Now, before yeah. you freak out. No, I'm not gonna freak out. I know, you don't tend to freak out. I'm just saying before inside, you ha yeah, before you do that on the inside, in defense of Dave, he said the only way to make these things, to give them the integrity they need to be able to hang on hinges yep. and move, he had to do this. Yep. So... It's the inside. You're not really supposed to look at them. So, okay, what's next? We're pretty sure that some of them might be a slightly different size than others. I'm not sure how that happened, whether it was in the cutting that we did or in the framing that they did. In order for this idea to work, it needs to be executed perfectly. But the frames are the wrong size, and now the doors won't close. So far, I've spent $2,000 printing and framing these photos, and if we can't make this work, that money has been wasted. I might never, ever, ever, never put another TV in a living room for so long as I live, because this might now be the most expensive TV ever known to mankind. I have bought eight pieces of original art, custom framed them, made a box, all this just to disguise the TV. You know what, from now on, if you want TV in the living room, hey, have a TV, that's what it looks like. The key to solving most design problems is a good night's sleep. With fresh eyes, we tackle the framed art problem again. And Chris has a simple solution. So what do you think? Uh, I think I could fix it, and I think it's gonna be fairly easy. Really? Instead of reframing the pictures, which would cost me a ton, he's gonna enlarge the television surround so that all the frames will fit. This is a great solution. Now that's thinking inside the box. If you think it's gonna be fairly easy, I'm willing to give it a go because so far I've invested about $2,000 in this and abandoning it makes me really sad. Don't abandon it. The guys that did the picture frames made them slightly bigger than they were supposed to be, so four of them together ends up being a half inch too big. I'm gonna make the frame bigger on the outside and make them look good. That's a neat fix and chill. We're almost at the finish line in our seasonal rental home living room, but there's one final hurdle. One of the biggest challenges in any renovation is scheduling. It's scheduling the trades to be here at the right time, trying to make sure that everything happens in a logical order, trying to make sure that you have as little wasted time as possible, and trying to make sure that you hit your end goal. When you order sizable items like a sofa, a sectional, you need to schedule the delivery. So I scheduled these deliveries. I told everybody that they were coming this morning. I told everybody the site had to be ready and clean, and I walked in and nothing is ready. Like, not close to ready. So I'm getting the vacuum, and we're gonna get this place clean, and we are gonna be ready for this delivery, whatever it takes. Sometimes you just gotta suck it up. This is the biggest chair I've Who's ever seen. Who's this stuff? Uh, by the way, I do think <laughs> these are the most enormous chairs I've ever sat in. This is like the lazy teenager. It's like a day hey, bed. Mom, give yes. me another cola. Yeah. Come on.
My rental home mudroom, powder room, and living room are finally complete. Tommy and I sit down to reflect on the design process. I think it's safe to call this house a large project. This was take it back, build it new, and here it is. The inspiration for this room was the barn in the backyard. I wanted guests to sit in this space and take in all the beautiful sight lines. But it's not just pretty, it's also practical. You need a stone pad at the entry. And taking that just simple gray and elevating it one notch with those bands of black. Perfect. And not expensive. Since these are affordable, large-scale tiles, I didn't need a lot of them. And the install was pretty simple, so I was able to save on labor costs. I stuck with my gut instinct to end the tiling before the closet. And I think it looks great. Every house is about telling stories. And when somebody says, oh, why did you choose that color for the powder room? Because I was have mad a... I wasn't in Ireland. <laughs> yeah, you'll have, you'll have a funny answer. Because I was jealous that Tommy was in Ireland and I was on a construction site, that's why. So that is a remnant piece of marble Love that sitting on two by fours as support with a little backsplash. This bathroom is green all over. Thanks to the low flow bathroom fixtures and recycled lumber, we hit all three R's. Reduce, reuse, relax. One of my favorite things in this room is the stair surround. This design detail turned out beautifully and it's made out of scrap lumber, so it literally cost nothing to do. This is so good. Like, I love that. I'll love be that. repeating that. Oh, totally. So unbeatable, it's repeatable. These benches, for instance, such a good idea. Custom built-ins would have cost a mint. My solution was repurposing prefab cabinetry, framing them with lumber, and topping them with a toddler bed cushion. I covered the cushion with inexpensive fabric and added some deep, loungy, textured pillows to get the layered look I love. Final result? Stunning seating that saved hundreds of dollars. This is a ski area. So you want to come in for apres ski and warm your hands at this fireplace. It's perfect for that. The fireplace is what makes this room, and it helps to heat the rest of the house. It's an investment worth making. This television surround turned out to be more of a splurge and a lot more work than I thought it would be. Maybe we could make it so we don't have to look at the television all of the time? That would be amazing if it works. Like, it sounds like a complicated situation. Not complicated. Turns out, we were both right. It took a few tries, but in the end, I love how it looks, and I would definitely do it again. How do I want to feel in the country? Well, I'll tell you, I want to be in a rocky chair right. next to a fire. I want a comfy sofa. I want to be surrounded by amenities. And I want to watch TV. This room has everything you need. Nothing you don't. And nothing you don't.